Hi, I'm Joy, and I'm here today with John. John, would you like to say hi and just let us know, you know, what you'd like to talk about today? Hey, everybody. John here um, from Denver, Colorado. It's sunny today for once in the last week or so. Um, this is my first astrology kind of reading or information that I've ever had. I've been on a personal path for a couple of years now. Um, and I guess the goal today is to learn a little bit more about what this can do to help me maybe uncover my authentic self. So I'm really excited and it's a great opportunity. All right, awesome. So that is actually a really interesting subject for you based on astrology, looking at your chart. And if you'd like, I can kind of just dive right into that at this point. Awesome. All right, so I have your chart in front of me that I'm looking at, and um, there are two rather significant things in your chart. The first being that your sun is conjunct your ascendant, but it's in your 12th house. So your ascendant is basically like, it's based on what time you were born, and it changes every couple hours or so. And um, it basically, it's like how you show up in the world. It's your demeanor, it's your, um, like your persona, like when you walk into a room, it's what people see about you, um, your appearance basically. So having a planet that's conjunct your ascendant means a little bit of the energy of that planet is going to be part of what people are seeing. Like it, it kind of joins forces with your ascendant. And um, so for you, you have not only your not only your, this is going to be annoying. Let me pull it up in a way that's not going to disappear on me. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. You have not only your sun, but also your Mars conjunct your ascendant in the 12th house. <laughs> all right, here we go. Um, <clears throat> so you know, Mars is, it's eight degrees, so it's not like super close to your ascendant, but your sun is two degrees from your ascendant, so that's pretty close. You also have Venus conjunct your ascendant, but that's in the first house. So the difference between the 12th house and the first house is that the 12th house is um, kind of where we lose ourselves. Um, so each house is uh, basically like, I'm actually gonna back it up a second because um, we can kind of start from the beginning with signs and houses. So in astrology, we've got planets, signs, and houses. And the planets are basically like the type of drive. So Mars is like our drive to fight for something. And that can come out in really healthy ways or really unhealthy ways. But it's something that, you know, that's what the drive is. It's like our masculine energy, our, our fight, our drive. Oh, like a warrior? Is the it, word warrior something? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It, but that can, um, that can come out in a lot of different ways. And the way that it's expressed in large part is determined by what sign it's in. So the planet is the type of drive, the nature of the drive, like, Venus's uh, loveliness. And I love Venus. Venus is one of my favorites. Venus is, is wonderful. <laughs> um, so it's like loveliness, everything that's beautiful and um, attractive to us. And like our concept of femininity is, is wrapped up in our Venus. Uh, you know, our moon is like our inner security needs, our inner world, our like way that we nurture um, people the way we need to be nurtured and our sun is how we shine mercury is like our thought and communication so that you know there's um, a number of different planets but just to give you an idea you know I'm listing several here um, and we'll just talk about the ones that are you know really relevant to the, the question at hand in this particular chart right now um, but really with charts like you know I read books by astrologers and articles by astrologers and a theme that I see repeatedly is that they say that even after, you know, 30 years, 40 years of 
being an astrologer, they're still seeing new things in their own charts. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of like endless. So we're like, I don't even know if I want to say we're like just barely scratching the surface. Like there's so much that it's like a lifetime of discovery to, to look into your chart and learn about your chart. So we're like just looking at a few of the things that are jumping out at me related to your question. But sure. there's, there's always a lot more to it. So, so basically the planet is the type of drive that we have in us. And then the sign is how we express that drive. And um, then the house is the area of life that's most strongly impacted by the way, by that drive that we're expressing and the way that we're expressing it through the sign. So are, are you kind of with me still on yes, this? Absolutely. It's yep. A lot of information. <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So um, then the, there's something called the angles and they're your ascendant, I see, which stands for something Latin that I'm not even going to try to say right now, um, and descendant and midheaven, and each of those is your persona in a different area of life. So like your ascendant is just like your general persona in life, your I see is the way you are at home, your descendant is like the way you are in relationships or like what you need from relationships, like what relationships well, need to bring to your one. life. Yeah, and it's completely opposite your ascendant. So the it's called the horizon, your ascendant and descendant. So like however you are, it's like an opposites attract kind of a thing. Like you, um, what you need in a relationship is something completely opposite of your own general demeanor. And um, you know, you, you kind of see that sometimes like if you think about someone that like is, you know really tough but you just know that you know with the, with their lover they're going to be very gentle and a big teddy bear you know it's like yeah. like that kind of thing um and then the fourth one is midheaven midheaven is like our public persona or our reputation our professional image like it's the way that we um interact with the world at large, not just like the people in our immediate vicinity, like the ascendant or the people in our home, like the IC or our important one-to-one -one partnerships, whether it's a, a romantic partner, a business partner, or like, a, you know, our, our BFF, <laughs> um, like the, that's what the descendant is about. So, um, so basically we have, you know, different personas for different areas of life. Okay. And um, the relevant ones in your case for this particular question are your ascendant and your midheaven, because we're looking at uh, your sun and your north node, and your sun is conjunct your ascendant in your 12th house, and your north node is in your 10th house. Um, it's not conjunct your midheaven, but it's in the house that, like, um, ah, how do I put it? <laughs> uh, the midheaven is the like kind of boundary where the tenth house starts. And the tenth house is like, you know, how you make an impact in the world, basically. So uh, going back to the ascendant now <laughs> that I explained all that stuff, um, your son is like kind of like your soul. It's like your your true authentic self. It's the thing about you that source. I'm sorry? Somewhat like source. I use the word source a lot. Oh, oh, um I I would say source is like kind of like all encompassing, like okay. like source source is everything, but your son is unique to you. So so it's not everything, but it's how like Another way you could put it is um, like when source, when you come forth from source into existence in the physical world, um, it's like the, the, the thing about you that's unique to you that, that shi it's how you shine basically. So it's connected to source. I mean, everything's connected to source, but, but it's, um, 
it is a unique thing, you know, because because yeah. when we're talking about source, it's like oneness, you know, it's everything. Um, right, right. And and your son is you specifically. Gotcha. You know, your little uh, drop of source within you, you could say. <laughs> I like that. That's cool. Yeah, and um, it's your light too. So so when we see the light in another person, we're seeing their sun, we're seeing how they shine. So in your case, it's interesting because it's in your 12th house. Okay. And the, the 12th house is, all right, so I'm actually gonna start out with the first house. The first house is just like how we show up in the world. It's like uh, how we behave, like our demeanor. It's very similar to the ascendant in that way. Like, um, but, it's also like how we're independent and um, you know, it's just how we, how we exist in the world, basically on our own. Like, like it's every house that uh, ever, okay. So every house um, gets more and more influenced by other people and more and more complex as we go around the, the houses on the wheel. Hmm. Um, but the first house is just us. <laughs> like we're on our own in the first house and, and that's our, and, and we carry that into all of our interactions too. So um, it's kind of like just who we are in a way. And then, um, you know, the second house is like our values and like our personal finances and, um, you know, things we like and don't like, that sort of thing. Third house is how we communicate with others. And basically it gets like more and more others focus as we go around until we get to the 12th house. And so, okay, let's stop at the 10th house because we're gonna be talking about that a lot. So the 10th house is like how we interact with the world at large. Like there's this acceptance of things, um, being the way they are now in the 10th house and how we can interact with that in various ways to you know whatever it is we're doing so we're interacting with the way things are right now okay. in the 10th house and there's kind of a recognition of like right now being built on the past and sometimes um, people talk about tradition related to that sort of thing but um, then in the 11th house, that's where we're progressive and where we change things. And um, then in the 12th house, there's this acceptance of the way things are, not in this like practical way, like it is for the 10th house, but in a very like spiritual surrender kind of way. And um, if you look at stages of life, this is like end of life stage where you're making peace with death and with not being you anymore, you know? And um, there are other themes that go along with the 12th house. Addiction can be a theme because basically any kind of escapism can be a theme in the 12th house. Um, there's a very, very, very wide range of between the higher and lower expression in the 12th house. So like the lower expression is escapism, um, like over-reliance on fantasy, self-delusion. Um, and uh, also there can be, um, like if you think about institutions like hospitals, prisons, military, um, like large corporations, anything where you're like not you anymore, you like get like, sucked into this thing that's bigger than you um and spirituality where you become you know one you know you're you're the universe <laughs> your source um that is also something that is that's like the higher the highest expression of the 12th house so and you know what i have an article that i wrote about this i could probably link it in the description for this video and um i yeah, I will do that. Okay. <laughs> so I will do that. But so basically when you have a 12th house placement um, that's conjunct your ascendant, it's something that you don't necessarily identify with yourself because the 12th house is all about loss of self. You know, it's um, ego death in a way that can be part of it. But because it's conjunct the ascendant, other people see it. So other people look at you and they see your Mars. They see that, you know, you could definitely like fight for something. 
um, and they see your son, they see you as, you know, being a, a shiny person, <laughs> you, you could say. Um, but it's not necessarily something that you see as being you. I've lost your sound. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, and so how does that, that fit in with my, what's it kind of mind? So, right. So you're asking about your authentic self, you know, and basically it's a, it's the question that a lot of philosophers and psychologists have asked over the years. And we call it self-actualization, we call it individualization, we call it enlightenment, we call it, um, we call it all sorts of things, but you know, basically you're just like trying to be your, like who you truly are. Um, like underneath all of the stuff that's not you, that most people think is them, all of the conditioning in society. And in your case, the, the way you shine is by being part of something that's bigger than you. You know, being part so, of and being that's specific to my chart. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so repeat that. So the way I shine is being part of something that's bigger than me. Okay. Yeah. So oneness, or um, you know, experiencing yourself as the universe, and recognizing that the separation between our us and other people is is really just an illusion, and. Um, I can talk about that a little bit if you'd like. Sure. <laughs> All right, so the thing that a lot of people like don't see when they're thinking about themselves is um, like they, they identify with their body, you know, their physical form a lot of times. Um, but our physical form is literally made up of earth and light. <laughs> like we are earth and the sun. <laughs> we are made of earth and the sun. Um, and our bodies aren't just like one static thing, like through time, like the food that we eat um, becomes our body in the future. And there's this regeneration that's constantly happening and we're letting go, either converting it into energy or eliminating it through, um, through waste or like, you know, we grow hair and then cut it off, you know, they're like, our bodies aren't the static thing. They're constantly changing. The dynamic, right, right. Taking in things from the environment. We're literally made of the earth, you know? We are earth. <laughs> um, and so, like, physically, there actually really isn't that much separation between ourselves, and there really isn't any separation between ourselves and other people. We're all just earth walking, earth and sun walking around here. <laughs> so what's the uniqueness? Um, well, that, that's our soul, you could say, our, our son. And also, there's the mind. So our minds are, we, you know, some people identify with their bodies. Some people identify with their minds, right? Like, I am my thoughts. <laughs> my, my beliefs make me who I am. Um, and that's why people can get very, 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 very threatened when their ideas are challenged because they feel like they're literally dying if they aren't right. They have to be right or they... they yeah, and a lot of that's happening right now in our, in our environment. And well, it's, it's kind of human nature in a way. And I think that we're seeing less and less of that as time goes by, actually. You know, there's more and more... Um, enlightenment on the planet as time goes by but um awesome not everybody does <laughs> um, a lot of people think things just keep getting worse and worse and worse but i think uh humans um you know over time we've been um evolving you know and there's certainly peaks and valleys and cycles but like on whole humans have been getting significantly less uh for example violent as as time goes by, you know, like, I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase going medieval on someone. There's right. a reason that phrase exists. <laughs> it's because. Right. right. It, and it's perspective. And, you know, it's so long ago, a lot of people don't see that. Right. But even like a hundred years ago, the kind of, the ways people like treated each other would get them sent to jail now. And then it was just normal, you know? So I do think that, you know, while there are always exceptions, the kind of thing that happens in the, you know, 
in if, if you look at the average, I'd say on average, humans are getting less violent as time goes by, but and, and more enlightened too. Nice. But um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I sort of want to tangent into Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but I'm going to reel it back in and stay focused. That's a fun rabbit hole to go down, but. Yeah, it, it is a fun one. Like because, well, basically the idea is that um, if our basic needs are met, like, like there's basically the hierarchy of needs is this pyramid and there's like our physical safety, security, you know, being fed, that sort of thing is the foundation of the pyramid. And then there are levels going up from there. And when your like needs are met on one level, then you get to focus on the next level. And at the top of it is self-actualization. So yep. you could say that people are becoming more enlightened like when they're not hungry, <laughs> basically. But um, in any case, uh, really get back in from that tangent. <laughs> um, so I have um, like a whole nother perspective on this in your chart and that is your north node and i actually have a book about nodes i'm gonna bring this a little bit closer um and i actually i have other books too i really like this one though but yours is in your 10th house and i'm just gonna read a little section from this book about that it says you'll feel on track each time you experience yourself advancing the needs of your hometown or family and you'll feel off track if you run home to your family when things in the world do not work out as you had planned. So the reason that it's talking about it in terms of home and family when it's really about like how you um, impact the world at large is because our comfort zone is our self node. It's like where we're coming from and our growth area is our north node. And for you, your south node is in your fourth house so that's like the comfort of home and family um, and your growth area, what you were, is kind of like destiny, you know, it's like what you were born to learn in this lifetime um, is in your 10th house, which is about like the impact that you make on the world and wow. like how you interact with the world at large. And um, the thing about the nodal axis, the so one side is opposite of the other side. And the thing about it is that um, it's really important not to just completely ignore one side and focus on the other side. It's important to bring the lessons of your south node into your north node. So in your case, having a comfortable home and like happy family life is going to be really important for you um, in having the security that you need to go out there and make a difference in the world. Cool. Yeah. yeah, that resonates, um, for sure. All right, awesome. So this is where things get really tricky, though. This is the really fun part of this, this uh, particular chart, your chart. <laughs> um, you actually have an intersection in the chart. So, uh-oh, I lost you. Oh, no. I'm going to pause. All right, so I've talked to John and what happened was he lost his internet connection. I guess being in the mountains means internet can be shaky at times. Totally understandable and I think a small price to pay to live in the mountains, like living in the mountains sounds amazing. Anyways, I realized that I never finished talking about the thing about how separation is an illusion mentally as well as physically. And in hindsight, I think we have uh, two somewhat distinct subjects in this video related to his chart, and it'll probably actually work out better to do part one and part two in my talk with John, and we can focus on the sun being in the 12th conjunct the ascendant in the first video, and we can focus on um, the intercepted north node in the 10th in Aries in the second video. So as far as separation being an illusion mentally, the basic thought there is that the way we think isn't actually who we are entirely. It's like, it's a part of us, certainly. Um, actually, many parts of us all think different things. Um, 
And uh, basically all of that is a response to our environment. It's a response to the experiences that we've had, to the things that other people have told us. Like none of our thoughts just like spring completely out of nowhere. All of them are a response or a reaction to something that we experience and to other people. Um, even communication itself wouldn't be possible without someone or something to communicate with. So um, even our thoughts, like people identify very, very much with their thoughts. They don't realize a lot of times that our thoughts are very largely, basically just our conditioning from our environment. And um, I also, my, my personal experience, I've got mercury in Pisces. So my, my personal experience is that I actually find that a lot of things that I think when I actually sit with them and, um, and, and really be with them and sometimes even like interact with, you know, different, different trains of thought, um, a lot of them aren't even actually mine. <laughs> like if you are familiar with the work of Carl Jung, we are all collected connected to a collective unconscious. And this is very, very much a 12th house thing. And um, like through our connection to the collective unconscious, society at large and like our own um, like connections with other people in our lives, like can like pop into our mind and uh, make an impact on us or like actively influence us from afar. And I know that sounds completely crazy. I don't care. That's, that's how I experience, um, how I experience uh, mental processes that um, from what I've seen, we're actually a lot more impacted by the people in our lives and even just the collective unconscious and society at large than we then we realize I think it's very rare for people to realize just how profound the impact of other people is on our own mental processes so anyways separation is an illusion there too and then as far as um you know we're body mind spirit and feelings feelings is kind of just like the combination of body, mind, and spirit all coming together. Um, and you can look in, in terms of astrology, body is like the physical world, that's earth, mind is air, um, and that's communication, socializing as well. Um, and spirit is fire and uh, feelings, that's water, and that's intuition, sensation, and, uh, and emotions. But in any case, um, in terms of spirit, um, there too, you know, like there's a little, uh, like John and I were talking about, a little drop of source in each of us, you know, we each have our own light inside of us. Um, you could say that life like we are life experiencing itself in the world of form and that life that's in us, like it, it's not something that like, like it's ours and it's us, but it didn't come from nowhere. You know, it comes from source and it goes back to source. And, uh, you know, science says that matter and energy, like don't ever get created or destroyed. They're just changing forms. And, um, you know, when we, see that very clearly in some areas of life um, but it's not as obvious in other areas of life so um, yeah basically separation is an illusion I'm going to stop recording now and we will have a second video with John where we focus more on the um, the 10th house and Aries and the nodal axis and um, yeah Thanks for watching.